In this presentation I'm going to introduce the mathematical perspective of the z-domain system view. Uh, I'm going to do it by way of example. I have a system here described with a signal flow diagram and the signal flow diagram has an associated um, difference equation. And combined these are basically the time domain view of a system, so to describe how a system behaves in the time domain. Now I've also mentioned before that this system has this pole zero plot um, we didn't explicitly state how I got these poles and zeros from this particular system, but by the end of this presentation you should see the relationship between the pole zero plot and the time domain view. So really this presentation makes the link between the time domain view and the z domain view using mathematics. Um, now we've already seen the link between the pole zero plot and the system's frequency response. I'll just bring up the frequency response now. So in previous presentations we made the relationship between the pole zero plot and the positions of the poles and zeros and how they influence the system's frequency response. So now really what we want to do is make the link between the pole zero plot or the Z domain view of a system and the time domain view. Um, and once you've made that link then you can move between the three different views as required. So in order to do that I have to introduce you to some mathematics. Um, we'll just remove, um, clear up a bit of space, we'll get rid of the frequency response and the signal flow diagram. And let's start by introducing something called the transfer function. So a system's transfer function is defined to be, or is given by the expression h of z and h of z or a systems transfer function oh, made a mistake there, function that. Um, h of z so it's mathematically by convention it's h of z defines a systems transfer function in the discrete domain and it's very easy to obtain h of z from a pole zero diagram basically the following rule is used um, in this system I have two zeros located at Z1 and Z2, so both of them are located at the origin, um, zero. And I've also got two poles. Um, now the system transfer function is very easy to obtain because it's given by the following expression. It'll be Z minus Z1 multiplied by Z minus Z2. And if I had another zero in the system, it would be Z minus Z3 and so on and so on. So I'm not limited to two zeros. Likewise I'm not limited to two poles either but the uh, the expression also includes poles and it is z minus p1 all over z minus p2 on the denominator terms. Um, and again if I had more poles I could just add in z minus P3, Z minus P4, etc. But in this case I only have the two. Um, so I can write out or expand this for this particular example by putting Z minus zero, Z minus zero, so there are the positions of my two zeros as shown over here, all over Z minus 0 0.65 plus, sorry, minus 0.52j all over z minus 0.65 plus 0.52j and I'll just remove the pole zero diagram now just to give me a little bit more room um, expanding that out again gives you z squared all over z squared minus 1.3z plus zero point seven. Okay, so multiplying that uh, numerator terms out like that you get this expression. And I can simplify that further by saying dividing by z to the power of two above and below, which would give you one all over 1 minus 1.3 z to the minus 1 
plus 0 0.7 by z to the minus 2. So that's h of z, that's the system transfer function in its fairly simple form over here. Now what I said earlier on is that we're going to use the mathematics now to link this expression to the mathematical uh, description in the time domain which is our difference equation. Um, now the, we can obtain the difference equation or sorry we can obtain the systems transfer function h of z from the difference equation as well. So what I'm going to do now is show you the systems transfer function using, well, by analysing the systems difference equation in the time domain. And I should get the same result because it's this transfer function that is the link between the graphical view of the z domain, i.e. the pole zero plot, and the difference equation and signal flow diagrams. So to do that, it's a very straightforward process, and I'll show you a few examples of how to do this in, a, in another presentation. But I'll just run through it quickly now, and you might even get the idea from this one example. But basically, to get the, um, the system transfer function from this, the first stage is to take the z-transform of this difference equation. And basically, the rule you follow is that any of the y terms become capital Y of z terms. Okay? So that y of n goes to y of z, x of n becomes capital X of z plus 1.3 this y of n term becomes y of z but it's also multiplied by z to the minus 1 and it's multiplied by z to the minus 1 because we the, this is basically y of n delayed by one sample minus 0 0.7 Again, we have a y of n term, so we, that becomes y of z. But it's z to the minus 2 in this case because um, this is y of n delayed by two samples. I'll, I'll give you a, a link to more examples of this, but this is it's a fairly straightforward process to go from a difference equation to um, the z transform of that difference equation. Now the next step is to realise that h of z is actually equal to y of z over x of z and just accept that for the moment it can be proven but just accept that expression for the moment and using that we can get h of z by just grouping all the y of z terms on the left hand side we can say y of z by 1 minus 1.3 z to the minus 1 plus 0 0.7 z to the minus 2 is equal to x of z. So this implies that y of z over x of z is equal to 1 over 1 minus 1.3 z to the minus 1 plus 0 0.7 z to the minus 2 and that of course is equal to h of z. So it's really the mathematics that provides the link between the graphical z domain view and the difference equation. So it's important to make that link in order to move between the three system views that you have. So the three system views are the time domain view, the z domain view and the frequency domain view. And it's important that you're able to move between each of those views because there's benefits to to being able to visualize a system in each of those views depending on what it is you need to do with the system.